Carl, uh, of course, official now that you've retired from the, the playing side of things, moving more into the, the coaching world as such now with your, your role that you had been taking on anyway. But for you in, in making that decision, uh, I suppose the first question is, how are you, you feeling about it? It was difficult, definitely a bit shell-shocked because um, it, it obviously wasn't the way I wanted to finish my career via an injury. Um, so it was, it was difficult to process for a couple of weeks. Um, took a while to sink in, uh, purely because it was sort of taken out of my hands. But it was something that I was preparing for anyway, given my age, um, given that the, the level that this squad is now at had to be realistic in terms of what I was offering as a player and despite feeling good physically, probably better than I had done for a long time, um, I knew retirement was on the horizon and uh, I think just because it was taken out of my hands through the injury, it sort of took a, a couple of weeks to adapt but um, yeah, it was something that I was prepared for and that I've fully digested now I suppose. Yeah, you mentioned the, the injury side of things kind of playing a bit of a part, obviously you've had a long term injury probably only about a month or a month and a half ago, really, from, from memory. Is it a bit of a frustrating one in a sense that that has possibly forced your hand a little bit? I know you, you said it had been in your head a little bit anyway, but obviously not the ideal way, as you say, for it to, to kind of be the one that calls time. Yeah, it was, I think that my right knee, considering that I, I did my me, me cruciate ligament on my right knee when I was 20, um, and I've sort of had issues with it ongoing ever since. So I said to myself, once I'd got post sort of 32, I think, uh, if I was ever to redo that knee again, if I had another ACL on the right knee, I would just call it a day. Um, so I have been keeping an eye on what I was going to do next, finishing playing, just in the eventuality that this would happen. Um, thankfully, it came at a time where I've transitioned straight into the coaching side of it, something that I had planned on, on pursuing post playing anyway. So... The timing's actually worked out quite well. I'm not sitting around sort of, you know, thinking about getting surgery or, um, you know, spending time in the gym trying to rehab. Uh, my mind's fully focused on obviously the coaching aspect of it and, and helping this, this talented group get to where it needs to be. Yeah, and then lastly on the, the playing side, really from, from your point of view, I suppose it's maybe a sometimes difficult one to, to kind of look at your career while it's still ongoing because you're still maybe even thinking of you know the things you could achieve and, and the places that you can go still so now with the playing side coming to a close how do you sort of reflect on on your career from your point of view now probably a career well it certainly wasn't a career that i envisaged i was definitely more ambitious in my head um particularly how it started obviously the danger is when you're part of such an elite club like a club like chelsea your expectations of your career automatically become very high. Um, so then when I found myself sort of at National League level at the end of my contract, uh, albeit you know, I'd suffered uh, the first ACL, which I just spoke about before, um, it takes a while to adapt and start questioning myself and start questioning, you know, where's this career going? I've, I've been a part of a, a world-class environment for the last five years. And now I, I find myself sort of fending for myself in non-league. So definitely in my head, I expected more from myself. Um, I managed to get back into the Football League, uh, made appearances in, in the Football League. But ultimately, when I look back, it was quite an unflattering career, if I'm honest with you. Um, a one that I've thoroughly enjoyed and I've been very, very lucky to make a living out of um, for the last 15, 16 years as a player. Um, but I think, I don't think any player playing in non-league would, would maybe say to themselves, you know, this is what I envisaged. Obviously, I always dreamed bigger, but the reality was I never quite hit those heights. But I was still fortunate in a way that I, um, I was able to play football for a living. And, uh, and three visits to Wembley as a, as a pro was, was obviously a highlight looking back. But um, yeah, I always felt like I would achieve more as a coach. Uh, I always felt I was better suited and I would, um, I would probably operate at a higher level as a coach. So this is a phase now that I'm going into that I'm really excited about and what I can potentially achieve. Yeah, and you mentioned going into the, the coaching world, delving into it pretty, 
full on as as things kind of developed around the club, really, with yourself and Robin Louis sort of taking things on a bit. But even going back a little to when you mentioned there being part of a, a sort of elite level club like like Chelsea quite early on in your career, obviously all I've had a bit of hands-on experience with quite a few managers who had careers at the, the very top of the game, really. So in your early sort of coaching career at the minute, have you found yourself taking bits and pieces and, and styles and stuff from those you've worked under in the past? 100%. I think this is where I always sort of knew in the back of my mind that coaching was definitely something that I wanted to pursue long term because I always used to take notes of certain sessions that I would be involved in. I would walk over if I wasn't involved with first team training, I would walk over after training with the reserves and I would watch the likes of Mourinho and Ancelotti. And, um, you know, I was lucky enough to have Brennan Rogers as my reserve manager for a couple of years. So I was actually involved in his sessions. So I often when I'm planning sessions now for the lads here, I often think back to, to what really worked for me um, and what I think would be beneficial for these players now. So definitely drawn on my experiences as a player, but always took notice of what the coaches were offering in terms of content and the detail and tactical, th tactical things. And yeah, I'm, I'm definitely revisiting those sessions and those moments where I absorbed quite a lot of information and I'm trying to now implement that into what we do on a, on a daily basis with uh, with this group yeah and is making that change from player to coach even a bit of a a mental shift perhaps given that as a player i imagine you're probably thinking in the first person quite a lot of you know what do i need as a player what do i need to do myself to get better and things like that whereas as a coach now you're responsible in part for the development of 20 odd other boys and trying to get them to be one cohesive unit on a weekend yeah, definitely. It's more of a holistic approach. Um, you know, we it's definitely more, instead of thinking about myself personally and my personal development, um, whilst I still enjoy, you know, pulling players one-to-one -one and, and maybe looking at things tactically, clipping some things where we feel like they can get better at. Generally on the pitch, it's about thinking about our style of play, um, different concepts and ideas of how we can improve, how we can disrupt the opposition's back line. That's a big one at the minute. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's a different way of looking at coaching and and being involved with this caliber of player because I'll say it again, I think this is the most talented group that Gateshead's ever had. So it's really satisfying to think of a session and then put it on for the boys and then be able to execute it really well, and that's a really satisfying part of coaching for me. And then seeing them implement that on a match day. So there's things that Rob has uh, tasked me and Louis to to get into sessions and when you see that come to fruition on a Saturday, it's a, it's a very rewarding feeling. So I, I'm, I'm loving the situation currently. I'm loving seeing intelligent players carry over detail that we're giving them on the on the training pitch and executing on a match day. There's, there's no better feeling. Yeah, and you touch on a match day specifically as well. How does that compare even, I suppose, post-match stuff as, as well versus being a player as a coach now? So you you win a game or you lose a game on a weekend, obviously as a, a player, I suppose you can be quite swept up in the emotional side of things, but I think even wins recently, for example, players are all at the back of the bus, obviously in a positive mood and stuff. Whereas, you know, yourself, Robin Louie are on the table at the front of the coach already talking about the next game and who you're playing next weekend. Whereas the lads maybe haven't quite started thinking about that yet. Yeah, there's definitely noticeable differences from, from being a player. You know, there's definitely less responsibility, obviously. Um, the focus on the next game pretty much happens immediately after we leave the, the stadium, whether it's home or away. So I've noticed that um, whilst you've got to enjoy the victories, which we've encouraged the lads to do, that our work um, pretty much begins on the opposition immediately. Um, so yeah, I've had to get used to, uh, to that element of it. Also in terms of keeping a, a level head on the touchline, something that arguably I wasn't great at as a player. Um, so now, speaking of referees as a coach, um, I've had a few comments from referees saying you're a little bit low key now that you're a, uh, you're a coach. So that, that's good feedback because I'm sure, um, like I said, Neil and Sonia would like us to be a little bit more level headed. Um, but yeah, there are obvious differences from being a player to a coach. But ultimately, I'm still wanting to immerse myself in the boys. Um, it, it's only it's been a quick transition, so. I think it's important just to be myself, not to change. Um, I definitely don't want to condescend the boys or come across 
uh, as if I know the game better than them because I don't. You know, this is a talented group. I'm very lucky to be working with them, and it's important that I project the personality that they can respect, um, but also not to come across sort of I was a teammate one minute and then not sort of come across condescending saying you should be doing this, you should be doing that because, you know, these are things that I would get wrong as a player, you know, just four weeks ago. So it's a, it's a delicate balance of being able to step into a role where you do command authority to a certain extent, but also remain a teammate because I love them and they're my mates. And uh, I think that's a, a really important part of our coaching team uh, that I still am that tangible link between the players in, in, in the coaching staff. And on the front of yourself being part of the, the coaching team with Rob, Louis and yourself, obviously up to your decision to retire now, the three of you were all registered as first team players, which is a, a unique one in itself as, as coaching staff now. But with them two also kind of getting their feet under the table as interim management still as well, how have you sort of found that relationship and, and that working environment with the three of us? Yeah, it's a massive learning curve. Look, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that you know I, I know everything about the game and that you know I, I'll get things wrong. You know, training sessions might not go as smoothly as I want. Um, I think what I've definitely learned is more time on the grass. You just get more comfortable with it. I feel like I have already from when I first took when I took my first session over a month ago to where I'm at now. So I know that I'll gradually improve, and you do just get more comfortable in your own skin in terms of putting sessions on and directing players and what you want from sessions. Um, so that's, it, it's just a massive learning curve. And where I'm very lucky is that we've got such a coachable group of players, players that are very understanding of our situation where we've all been registered as players. We're all in a little bit of uncharted territory in terms of, you know, we're in the management side of it now, but there's a, there's a wealth of knowledge amongst the three of us. Rob's obviously played at the, the highest level. Louis's been involved with the coaching for, for a long time, you know, going back to when Mike and, and Ian were here. So there is experience there and we all seem to bounce off each other quite well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a massive learning curve. And um, like I said before, it's, it's important that I don't sort of come across like I know it all and that I'm all of a sudden, because I'm not a player anymore, I'm a coach, you know, I'm instructing players to do this, that, the other. It's a fine balance and it's a learning curve, but I couldn't wish to do it for a better group of lads, a more understanding group of people. And um, yeah, it's just a pleasure to be on the pitch with them every day. Yeah, and, and I mean, you mentioned coaching was something you kind of wanted or had an idea of wanting to, to move to when you were still a player. So now that you have actually done it, how are you sort of finding it on even the enjoyment side? Because I suppose when you get an idea in your, your head when you're not actually doing it and think, oh, that might be something that I want to move into in the future, you can maybe kind of pick out the good parts and only focus on them a little bit. So how are you finding it as a whole picture at the minute? I'm loving it, to be honest. Um, like I said, I always wanted to go into coaching, not really knowing what to expect once you actually get in the, the situation. I've said, you know, I'm working with, with really talented players, like, you know, the majority of the group, um, you know, can all play at a higher level. There's no doubt about that. So we're very lucky with the group that we're working with. Um, and yeah, I find myself laying in bed. I'm not getting much sleep, I'll be honest with you. I find myself laying in bed thinking of session plans um, and then not wanting that session to leave my head. So I'll wake up in the middle of the night and scribble it down on a piece of paper and then revisit it the next day and dress it up. So um, I'm constantly thinking about the game. I never went into this coaching role sort of premeditating what type of coach I would be. I'm just sort of enjoying the journey and finding out things about myself. When I took the team uh, for Dorkin and Rob was up in the stand, never said to myself, I'm gonna get in the red zone on the touchline here and just run up and down like a lunatic but that's pretty much what I did um, so yeah it's it's a learning curve every day and I'm thoroughly enjoying it thoroughly enjoying the challenge on getting better delivering better quality for the boys because they deserve it the top players for this level and um, and they deserve good quality and good detail and uh, yeah it's everything that I, I wanted it to be and uh, hopefully it just gets better and better